Gary's way too early top 25. I'm going to start at the bottom. I'm going to tell you the ones that I do not have in the top 25 to start us off. Okay, just to get this out of the way, let you guys know exactly uh, where these teams are. UCLA, Texas A&M. I don't have in the top 25. Uh, I think they they will definitely, I think A&M will definitely be improved. UCLA, got to prove it to me with the quarterback situation. Uh, obviously, they got good players. I do trust Chip Kelly, but that defense was woof, uh, really bad, really bad. A&M, I mean, there's all kinds of, you guys know. Uh, we'll see what Bobby Petrino brings to that offense. Texas Tech, I don't have in, although they were right there for me. We'll see what this team looks like next year. Um, had some close, you know, one-score wins, et cetera, but that, that's a fun team going forward. South Carolina, we got a lot of movement. With South Carolina, right? Transfer portal, et cetera. They got a lot of guys coming in. Uh, that's a, I, I, I want to know what's going on with Spencer Rattler. I, I need to know a lot of things. Uh, Juice Wells said that he is coming back. So I would imagine Rattler's probably coming back, but we'll see. Arkansas, I do not have in. Again, transfer portal stuff, uh, you know, and losing Barry Odom. What's that going to do? We'll, we'll see about Arkansas. I do like KJ Jeff. Um, TCU, I do not have in. I just showed you what they're losing next year. Uh, they need to prove it to me. This is not a program like some of these others where when you lose a bunch of that top-end talent, I'm just going to slot you right back in uh, to the top 10, top 5, whatever. I, I need to see a few things, okay? Uh, I, I didn't like the Sonny Dykes hire for a reason uh, initially. Now, I mean, it looks like a lot of fun. It's obvious he's a good coach, et cetera. Uh, but he always had those late season swoons. It felt like people figured out his offense, et cetera. Uh, it's still, I still need to see something from TCU before I can rank him this year going into this 2023 season. All right, 25 through 21. Number 25, I've got North Carolina. Number 24, Tulane. Number 23, Troy. Number 22, Duke. Number 21, NC State. NC State just got Brennan Armstrong, the Virginia quarterback, out of the portal. They hired the offensive coordinator, Robert Anai. Uh, Duke has got Riley Leonard coming back. That's certainly going to be uh, a good thing. And then, of course, year two of a Mike Elko defense always seems to improve. Troy, uh, John Summerall just started. They are going to lose some dudes, but uh, I think that's a that's still going to be a really, really good defense. Tulane, how much of a loss is Tajay Spears? I think that's going to be a, a huge thing to look at, but they do have Michael Pratt coming back. I think Tulane could run the AAC for a little while, especially with UCF, Houston, and Cincy leaving. Uh, North Carolina, you got Drake May coming back. I I thought about putting TCU at 25 instead. I, I trust Drake May. I don't know about the offensive coordinator hire of Chip Lindsay. I'll just say that. Uh, moving to 20 through 16, number 20, Wisconsin. I trust Luke Fickle. And, and Phil Longo coming in, the transfer portal has already been incredibly kind to them. Uh, SMU quarterback Tanner Mordecai has transferred in. I think he's going to be a good day one starter for them. Uh, I like Wisconsin, uh, number 20. Number 19, Ole Miss. I trust Lane Kiffin, too. I don't think the defense is great, but I do think year two of Jackson Dart in Lane Kiffin's system is going to be good. Uh, they've still got Judkins, the running back. they still got a good line. I, I like Ole Miss a little bit. Number 18, Oregon State. I thought about putting them higher. I need to see DJU in this offense. That's what I need to see. Uh, I trust Jonathan Smith. I think they're going to do insanely good things. Uh, this team has the possibility of going much, much higher on this list. But I've got them at 18 for now. Number 17, Kansas State. This one's interesting. Chris Kleiman has proven time and time again that he is an incredible Big 12 coach, a very, very good coach. Um, they lose Deuce Vaughn. Who, uh, who's going to step up and be the guy? Like, is Malik Knowles coming back? I'm, I'm not certain about that. Uh, they do have Will Howard coming back. So, you know. Will Howard, massive step forward this year. Uh, we'll see what year two of the new OC's uh, tenure looks like. Um, that's Colin Klein, by the way. Number 16, I've got Oklahoma. I know they weren't great this year. I know they had a losing record. I understand that. Year two of Brent Venables should be a lot better than year one. I think year two for that defense is certainly a step in the right direction. I think having Dylan Gabriel come back is a good thing. I think they obviously need some depth. They're getting Jackson Arnold in. That's good. I, I don't know much about the running back situation. Although uh, Eric Gray, like losing him, certainly hurts. I think they got some dudes there, though. And I think that the lines are going to be just fine, especially in the Big 12. Uh, this year was a a weird one for that bunch. I expect them to get back to their winning ways this season. 15 through 11. Number 15, I've got Utah. You got Cam Rising coming back. You got Brent Keithy coming back. Uh, and it's a Kyle Whittingham team. So number 15 there. Number 14. Might be surprising. Clemson. I got to see more from Cade Klubnik. I need to see more from that coaching staff. They got the dudes, uh, but this team has just been underwhelming for the last two years. Uh, I need to see more out of Dabo's bunch. Number 13, Notre Dame. This is a team that could rise significantly higher for me, but they need somebody for Sam Hartman to throw the ball to. They got running backs. They got a great line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. Uh, defense, I think, is still really good. I need to see I need to see who's going to throw to. Just need to see that. Number 12, I've got Oregon. Uh, Bo Nix coming back it certainly helps things out. And Dan Lanning is, I'm going to say, cleaning up in the portal. 
Uh, I think the defense is going to be significantly improved this year, especially at the line of scrimmage. Number 11, Texas. You got dudes. You got Isaiah Nair coming back. Uh, now, they did just lose uh, Brennan Marion, their passing game coordinator. We'll we'll talk about that in a little while. But um, there are, yeah, I've, I've got questions about Texas, and, and I know they went 8-5 and five this year. I still think that they can be really, really good. Uh, I think Quinn Ewers was hurt for a good portion of this season. I think that they can be better. So I will uh, I will put Texas at number 11. So let's move to the top 10. Number 10, I've got Tennessee. Yes, I understand Vol fans are going to be incredibly hyped up after that big win over uh, Clemson in the Orange Bowl. I know that. But I still need to see either Milton or Nico at quarterback. And it, trust me, I think that Heupel is going to have this offense clicking. I, I'm with you. I get it. I don't think the loss of Alex Golesh is that big of a deal, especially for this team. I need to see the defense play a little bit better. I'm curious what the losses on the line of scrimmage are going to mean because they had some dudes, absolutely had some dudes that were brought in by Jeremy Pruitt. Uh, can Heupel recruit that line of scrimmage. So that's number 10 for Tennessee. Number nine, Washington. They got Penix back. Kalen DeBoer is always awesome. If they can get the defense short up, this this could be a playoff competitor this year. They could be a Pac-12 uh, competitor as well. Number eight, USC. I expect big things from Caleb Williams again. Uh, they're keeping Alex Grinch as defensive coordinator. They got to up the talent on the defensive side of the ball. Number seven, I've got Michigan at number seven. I think losing Biff Pogey is going to be a bigger deal than people seem to believe. On top of that, you suffer a loss like they did in the playoff. Mm. The schedule is not as kind this coming season. And along with that, yeah, Blake Corum's coming back, and Donovan Edwards is coming back, and J.J. McCarthy's coming back, but this team did not win games with their offense. Like, they just didn't. Like, it, the offensive line is going to lose some pieces. Uh, they have cleaned up a little bit in the portal, but I, I've got Michigan substantially lower than uh, quite a few people. Like, they got that win over Ohio State. Man, you look back on it, that thing feels a little flukish. Uh, Michigan fans, don't bash me for that. I mean, my guy. You guys played the game and you won it and you want it going away. But still, eh, I've got a question, especially because we don't know what's going to happen with the hardball, with the NCAA stuff. I mean, it's just who knows? Who knows? Uh, number six, I have Alabama. Uh, this is another one. I expect that um, I expect Ty Simpson is going to be the quarterback. Now, there's going to be a competition between him and Milrow. Uh, Jace McClellan, I think, is probably going to be your starting running back next year. I think uh, you still got plenty of guys on defense as well, but you're going to lose your starting safety. Uh, you're losing branch. You're losing battle. You're losing. Um, are you losing battle? I, I think he's a senior. I think he's like a fifth year. I don't, I don't know. I can never tell about eligibility anymore. None of it makes sense. But um, Alabama, you know, you lose Bryce Young. You lose Will Anderson. Eh, we'll see. Is that Could that actually be good for this team? I, who knows? Um, I know some of y'all think that's crazy, but yeah, we'll see. Number five, I have Florida State. They got a whole bunch of dudes coming back. Year four for Mike Norvell. They are cleaning up in the transfer portal again. They had a pretty decent recruiting class. Uh, at this team, this team looks legit. They are fired up. Uh, I like Florida State. Number four. I know my I know my top twenty five looks different than a lot of people. Number four. I have Penn State. I am a Drew Alar Aller. However you want to say it, I'm a Drew believer. I will say that. They got a great running back duo. The offensive line and the defensive line look incredibly strong. That defense under Manny, uh, excuse me, Manny Diaz is awesome. Like, I think they're only going to get better uh, in year two under Manny. Yeah, Penn State, this is a, this is a buy on Penn State for me. Uh, number three, the LSU Tigers. Uh, look, Brian Kelly has got a bunch of dudes coming back. They got the wide receivers. They got the quarterback coming back. Uh, Jaden Daniels is going to be the starter. We'll see what ends up happening after that. But man, uh, this team is pretty loaded. They got a lot of defensive guys that that were injured that are coming back. This team is going to be loaded. Uh, year two with Matt House. Uh, Mike Denbrock's offense wasn't great, but they don't need them to be great. I, I I think this team's going to be really, really good again. Number two, Ohio State. And I know you're going, well, Gary, TCU lost their quarterback, their Heisman Trophy finalist quarterback, and, and you've got them out of the top 25. Ohio State, it, they're losing all kind of guys. Ohio State replaces talent. They just do. And part of me wonders, uh, this team is going to be pretty fired up after what happened losing to Michigan. What happened uh, losing in the playoff game the way that they did? I think the guys that are left over on this team are going to be fired up. And year two, of a Jim Knowles defense. Year two of a Jim Knowles defense. I think this defense is going to be lights out next year. They got a ton of dudes. They just a ton of dudes. And then, number one, I have Jordan. I don't think I need to explain too much about that. I know that they're losing sets and Bennett. I don't think it matters. This is a team that is not quarterback dependent. This team could win with anybody back then. Nah, not anybody. They needed Stetson for multiple games this year. Uh, but the way that this team is set up right now and against the schedule that they have in 2023, they can win against anybody. And you give somebody 12 games to develop at the quarterback position, yeah, I think they'll probably be ready, you know, by the SEC championship by playoff time. So not too shabby. Let me know if you agree or disagree. Psst. 
Hey, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and of course, jump in the comments. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app, and make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE, and the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.